for the future, you know? Yeah. But yeah, um, let's move to uh, uh, player position and changes. We just talk about this. I don't know, maybe just throw in a few comments, you know. Um, uh, I think, uh, let me, let me. This one? Yes, yes, that's the one, yes, exactly. Yeah, so um, Kai Habert, <clears throat> I think he was a striker from a forward uh, to to a midfielder, which is I think it makes sense for him to be to be a midfielder now because he wasn't he was just like mm-hmm. a, a false nine. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Julia Insico forward to mid, Sergio Canos, I don't know who this is at Brentford. Sergio Canos, Brentford defender to a midfield. Uh, Momo from a forward to a midfielder, which is also you know correct. Uh, mm-hmm. one visa from midfielder to forward. So since I think since uh, uh, Tony is out, I think this guy even last season we saw that he was uh, playing some um, some games as a striker and he did really well. I think it's probably good. So we should take a look at that. Lewis Hall at Chelsea, midfielder to a defender. Yes, Cody Gakpo, midfielder to a forward. So he's going to be your main striker right, right now, right? As a Liverpool player, fine. Is he going Gakpo? to be a main striker, Gakpo? Yeah. I don't know. I, honestly, I don't know. I think Nunes will come back. Uh, I think Nunes is still a key player there, mm-hmm. but he needs to find, like, we need to find a system that works with him. And Gakpo, yeah, he came in and do the Bobby thing very well. So I would say he will start the season, but it's going to be a competition who's going to, you know, stamp his authority in that position. So it's, we're going to see some rotations there. The Liverpool force, like, personally, I, I'm going to avoid them for now. Mm. But if you if you see a trend who's going who's starting, I think they are at a good price. They have a lot of options. I think your coach has a lot of options right now. And yeah, unless those options only the one I trust most is Jota. Jota. <laughs> if he's fit, I think he's, he's one of the ones I trust most. Really? Huh? He's gonna play if he's fit. I trust Jota. Yeah, yeah he's okay. very good. I really like Jota. So Jota is eight million for what is now a midfielder. So now before he was a forward because he has less points, but as a midfielder, he's they get they keep changing him. He was a midfielder to forward, forward yeah, to midfielder. Forward, forward, midfielder. midfielder yeah, they, they, are, they, 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 they are not decisive. These FPL people. <laughs> Matt Ritchie, Newcastle, defender to a midfielder. <laughs> Benan Johnson, who did very well for me for uh, Nottingham Forest. I mean, last season, man, it was, I think I was impressed with him, to be honest. And I was expecting the big team to come and, like, you know, uh, sign him up. Yeah. So he's now back to a forward, which is very more enticing as a, you know, back to a midfielder, sorry. The Charleston, from a forward to a midfielder. So we have the list. Uh, which one do you think you'll be considering? Or, you know, this is a good uh, move to make. I might take a look at this player. Yeah. <laughs> the interesting ones for me. Kai uh, Havertz, I don't know what he's going to play at Arsenal. Left because of I think he is not in the best Arsenal team. If I look at the Arsenal team and say pick the best team, despite his price, I don't think Kai Havertz is... is yeah, so I don't know what he's, what, what he's going to do because... He's, he plays in similar position as Odegaard. Odegaard is their captain. He's one of the best players in the league last season. So I don't see him uh, taking him out. And Gabriel Jesus, if he's playing as a, as a false nine, that's his other position. So these are the, his main positions. Mm-hmm. And I cannot see Arsenal playing Odegaard and, and, and Havas and then playing one six behind them. That does, does, just doesn't yeah, make sense for me right, at this yeah. point. But that seems to be what they are going to do. That seems mm-hmm. to be it. But for me, like... It is stretching your midfield, like it's this, you know, ex- exposing your midfield. No matter who, go- how good the number six is, it is exposing that number six playing these two players in front of them. Depends right. on how they work. Yeah, right. So they're, 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 they're going to sign uh, um, 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 Rice. Declan Rice, yes. Declan Rice is the likely yeah. like, the player they were going to sign. I think he did his med- medical already with them. I saw that from uh, Fabricio. Uh, yeah. So, kind of, I, I'm not going to say much about him, but and CISO, Julio and CISO. 5.5 million. He moved from forward to midfield. So, so he's going to be the new yeah, His price is good. Yeah, his price is good. And we all know what he can do. Yeah. Like last season, he, his numbers were very good. His uh, XGA was good. Expected goal involvement was good. XGI was good. So it was close to one. <clears throat> his cost of, he did not start a lot of games. So the sample size was quite low. But for his price to go from 4.5 just to 5.5, Maybe that's the right price for him. He's a player that you can risk and take. And then if he nails that place in that Brighton team, which is looking likely with this, uh, with McAllister leaving and stuff like that. So it could be a very interesting one. He's a player that I'm, I'm watching very, very keenly. He could be even be in my team at the start of the season. Who never know? The other player who is very interesting is Buemo. I think Buemo. the most important ones are the players. Yeah, Buemo, yeah. The, the players that move from midfield to forward. Yeah. Buemo is really interesting. 6.5 million. Uh, 
what's his name? Tony is not in the team, so who's gonna lead the line? It's gonna be Mbuemo. Of yeah, course, they have another striker. Like, and this and German and guy. Those two are the yeah. ones leaving, leading the team. And they send, you said they yeah. send a forward, right? They send a new forward. But yeah, they have yeah. a new forward. A German. He was there last season. They are number nine. Uh, he's a young player, but they sign him for a lot of money. So I would expect him to also play, with, especially with Tony not in the team. And uh, another player, interesting, is, is uh, Gakpo is not so interesting because he moved to forward. For me, those things doesn't appeal to me. He have moved from yeah. missing before. More points. More yeah. points for <laughs> yeah. Jota, if he, if he nears his place, he could be interesting. But the other main one is Richarlison. Uh, mm -hmm. Why I like, I think Richarlison is the one I like the most. Even though people will say, look at this guy, he we keep him jiggy. <laughs> because Richard Lesson, uh, we all know what's going on at Tottenham right now. Hurricane, um, I don't think for me personally, I think he will leave. I think he will leave because he's not gonna sign a contract. Uh, if you keep him, you lose him for free, you can sell him for around 100 million this year, or you lose him for free next season because I don't think he signs a contract. So, and for me personally, I think Levy is a sensible guy even though he's acting crazy abnormal at this these, these days i think he's a sensible guy he he's just trying to you know force it i think they often had a contract and they're gonna see what happens there if he, but i don't think he's gonna sign it personally he I think that's it my just like last, like you know he hasn't signed it you know when he was about to, when he was yeah. supposed to to go to to city they also had a yeah. contract on the table and he never signed it so i don't know and he never said he never he was, he's not gonna sign a, another contract so it, de it depends on that so if hurricane were to leave then who leaves the line Son like, and, and the, Charleston. The Charleston is a striker. Son is, like, can see, he's a uh, supporting striker. Son, is, Son will still play at the, uh, on, on the wing. I think the, the will is the, is the main one who will, because he's a striker. Brazil play him as a striker. And he did well at Bra with Brazil in the World Cup, like, you know, putting players like Gabriel Jesus and all these players on the bench. Mm -hmm. So he's he has something. And then Tottenham have a, don't, let's not forget Tottenham have a new coach. So a different coach, maybe, you know, he has his chance. And uh, what happens when he has a chance? As a midfielder, Playing out of position because he's a forward, and also his price is at seven million, and there is no cane to distract him there. So the only other, the, the only uh, negative side about this is his injury record from last season and his goal scored. He, he, I think he only scored one goal in, in the league. That was against Liverpool. That was the only goal he scored in the league last season. Uh, so that and his injury record from last season are the two things that we will worry. But if these things can be cleared. For me personally, I'm always, you know, I always try to be positive about injury play, injured players. So um, I'm not gonna call him an injured. I, I think maybe he had a bad luck with bad luck season with injuries. Sometimes he, they might be a, an injury prone player, but he, we have seen him play a full season in the Premier League before. Before he went to Tottenham, he was at, at Everton. He was doing it at Watford. He was at doing it. So this season, he just had one of those bad seasons, just like Rashford had mm. two, two seasons ago. So him at the seven million, being a midfielder, is underpriced. If he hit the potential, I think he can hit. And then, you know, with all surrounding him, he's an interesting one. He's the most interesting one for me. How about you? I think Momo, I think you already need it. For me, Momo, Momo is the most interesting because we can see from Brentford, since they came into the league, he has been it's like a supporting striker type of player. He is content providing for Tony, but he also scores a couple of goals. But now that Tony is not there, I think he the, the responsibility of scoring goals falls to him. And he's now been reversed from a forward now to a midfielder. So, like, it's very interesting. And the 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 way Brentford plays, like, they understand that counter-attacking football. Like, they can do it to anyone. It doesn't matter who you are. In Man City, they can score you, like, in the blink of an eye. They, they understand each other. So, I think Bomo, for me, is really interesting. So, we'll see how it goes. I might have him in my draft soon enough. You never know. But, <laughs> talk about draft. Let's go uh, segue into the next uh, uh, point of discussion. Uh, first draft. This is the first of many drafts <laughs> to come <laughs> for each of us. Yeah. So I think I did my draft without even, I just, it's like just my instincts telling, okay, pick this guy. I didn't do any sort of analysis or anything. I just feel like, okay, based on the knowledge that I have from last season, <coughs> this is the team that I feel like if the season were to start tomorrow, this is the team I would go with. You know, I okay. have Martinez. Um, Aston Villa, like I said, they're very good right now. I think they're improving. They're going to be good defensively this season. They're going to be much better than last season. Even though they have a tough fixture, the first game against Newcastle away, you know, but I still imagine that I think it's still like uh, my, my my keeper. I'm going with a 3-5-2. Obviously, we have a lot of midfielders this time around, you know, like last season too, you know, so I'm going to maximize the points by having more midfielders than, than attackers. <clears throat> so in defense, I have Trent, Estupinian, and Zinchenko. Estupinian, 
obviously we all know he's an attacking uh, fullback. So I think I'm, I'm more. It's about familiarity more, more about anything. I'm familiar with having him in my team, and they play Luton, a newly promoted team, anyway. So that's fine. I think they will score, they will win. He might have a, a haul, you never know. The next one is Zinchenko, who I believe is going to be playing more in the midfield. I'm surprised I picked him because I was thinking, oh, he did well last season, but like you said, maybe injuries. But uh, he didn't have a lot of, a lot of points. Um, ben White was the one that had more points last season. So, you know, anyway, an Arsenal defender. But ben, Zinchenko is just there like a, like a, a what do you call it again? Uh, somebody to st stand in, just in case I want to change my options to an, another Arsenal defender. In the midfield, I have Rashford, Martinelli, Foden, Mitoma, Momo. Like you said, Momo is in my team. Mitoma also is in my team. I think he'll do much better this, this time around. Foden is in there because there is no um, uh, KDB. KDB is injured. So maybe by the time the season starts, he'll be there. But he's also not as expensive this time around. So that'll be interesting to see. But Foden is one of my, like, I like the player, uh, even though he plays for my arrivals. But I've always been a fan of Foden. Captain Haaland and Darwin Nunes. Nunes, I was asking you about Nunes and Arsenal, I mean, Liverpool positions. Because it's interesting, the price has gone down. This is his second season, so he's the, the pressure is not as much as it was last season. So he's probably should be settled in right now. Because 100 million price point, man, like, that's not, you know, you don't, don't sign a player for 100 million and expect him to bench for the second season. So I think he's going to start and it's going to have an impact. In the bench, I have Ariola, I have uh, Defender Holgate, I have Guihi, um, Crystal Palace also a Defender, and then I have Nketiah uh, forward. So that's my team. Any points or pointers or <laughs> observations <laughs> of my team? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's a draft, it's a preseason draft. This season yeah. hasn't gone yet, uh, anywhere yet. So you can have anybody we want at this point. We can, <laughs> we can change as much as we want, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that that one is interesting. <laughs> that one is interesting. Zinchenko is interesting. Uh, yeah, but other, 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 otherwise, I think it's, it's, it's what people usually start with. You only, only maybe go keep it. You go. You go into. I am. I am. I am quite. Yeah. Uh, it's like uh, Martinez. I don't know. But yeah, uh, for now we are playing Newcastle in the first game away to away from home. It's a bit so difficult. That's yeah, it's a bit difficult. So. But yeah. Yeah. yeah, but Darwin, yeah, <clears throat> I hate when people say he's a hundred million player. <laughs> but he is. I mean, you know, well, he is not. <laughs> if, you watch, if you watch him play, you can say there's something there, but I don't think he's worth hundred million. But that's what you bought him for. But no, know. no, I mean, I mean the price. We did not oh, pay the price. Million. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and there's something there, but I, I think he's still rough. He still needs coaching. You know, he still needs to settle. He needs, you know, he needs guidance. To be honest, but he's a player. Even like, to be honest, there is hope. Like. Mm. For me, I don't think he had a terrible first season. I don't mm. think... Uh, I I know he could have done better. Yeah. Uh, he still scored about uh, 15 or more goals. He scored nine goals in the league. He scored about six goals in the Champions League or some stuff like that. And uh, yeah, in the FA Cup, he scored two. I think he scored 15, around 15 goals over the season. And then he had some other goals involvement, assists and stuff like this. So in terms of numbers, like his numbers were even better than like players like Suarez in their first season mm. at Liverpool. Like, yeah, the only issue with, with Darwin with many people is Finishing. the chances that he we are missing. You know, and and his early season, the red card and stuff like that, those kind of things, you know, hit him hard. Excellent things, yeah. He's and, nice. you know, he's awkward. He's an awkward player, but he can be a very difficult player to play against. Yeah. Like, teams don't like to play against him. He's a very good player. And, yeah, Six six hundred, like sixty four million. We pay six six <laughs> sixty four million. That can that can rise to sixty four million pounds. Yeah, that can rise to eighty five million pounds. But before it rises, there Liverpool have to do well. So he's yeah. he's not actually that 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 price. But yeah, if I was going to Liverpool striker for game week one, I wouldn't go with him. I would go with with with, with Gakpo, yeah. honestly. Okay. And uh, yeah. But yeah, it's a first draft, like I say. So maybe when we get very close to the season, maybe that. that and yeah, I like the Ariola South too. You went with Ariola. I see. I, I, I like if he was to win his first first choice mm -hmm. with his eight million price tag, he could be an interesting player. So yeah, your team. Yeah, it's a good start. Yeah, let's uh, let's let's move on to yours, to your team. Okay. Well, yeah, no Haaland. That is the first thing. <laughs> No, Anna, but because because I can at this point, right? Yeah, I've not reached any point where I have made my deal. Yeah, it's, it's a draft. I've not reached any point where I. But of yeah. course, I will not be surprised too if he was not there at the start of the season. Similarly, I will not be surprised if he was there. So, 
I'm not said that Hala. It has to make sense to me. Like I will think about it deeply and then you know analyze it in my own way of analysis analyzing stuff. And then I will make that decision. Maybe the best thing is for him to be there. Maybe the best thing is for him not to be there. Currently, I have uh Fagosin and Gabriel Jesus. Those are I I I I, I gonna start with up top. So those players cost equally as Haaland. <laughs> so if I can start those two players <laughs> for, for the same price as Haaland and then spend the 4.5 million like or the remaining money uh, on, on on other players, getting other players. Look at my midfield. I really like my midfield at the start. But anyways, my, my goalkeeper, I went with Pickford because of Everton. Uh, he's 4.5, keeper than last season. And Everton have a good start to the season. They play a good uh, a, a good fixture at the, at the start of the season against Fulham. And if you know me well, I'm only thinking about two or three games at this stage. I'm mm -hmm. only thinking about that. Let me because last season it did not work. Faster. Yeah, it's, I have to have that booster start. That is what I'm thinking about. Which players will give it to me? And Pickford with his fixture is very good. Even Trent, I'm thinking maybe Trent. I should not get him for this first game. First I should get him yeah, after. Possibly. Or I will even bench him because we play in Chelsea. I don't know what to expect in that game. But maybe at the end of the day, my loyalty, Liverpool loyalty, will just you know tend to keep keep me with him. But it's not going to be like I feel okay. He is necessary in my team. I don't feel he is necessary in my team at this stage. Uh, Gabriel Jesus, with his, you know, seven, he's on a price. Arsenal play the best fixture. The Arsenal have the best fixture at the start of the season with Nottingham Forest at home. So I'm going to go triple Arsenal for that. That is Saka, um, Jesus, and, 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 and Gabriel. And then Stones, Man City, Burnley. I think defensively it's going to be good for Man City. Uh, if I have the indication that Stones is going to start, I'm going to really pick him 5.5 .5 million. It's a key price for him. And in my midfield, I really like it. Uh, I went with kind of a premium midfield, you could call it, like we used to say. Uh, Rashford, Fernandez, Man United double up. They have a good start yeah. to the season, good fixture. Wolves, and then Saka, Foden, and then, and then Salah. So the team might not be balanced. Uh, in terms of going forward, what happened? And then up top, I have uh, Ferguson who plays at losing and and, and 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 Gabriel Jesus. So for me, it's all about the fixtures at this stage. And then my bench is like Holgate, Bodman, Bell, and then Archer. Yeah, this is it. If without if if without Haaland, it's tempting, <laughs> but I have to think about it. I have yeah, to think about it deeply and then see what <laughs> what, what goes. Yeah, Salaf obviously because of his record in the start of the season is always good. Not the greatest record against Chelsea. He has scored in every single game he has played in the play. Of course, there could be a stop to that. Mm. Uh, maybe this season is the stop to that season where he will not score in his first game. But yeah, well, uh, maybe and a little bit of Liverpool loyalty there. <laughs> <laughs> As expected. Um, okay, so let's just uh, move to uh, the fan corner, just the last segment, just to end the the the, the, the pod on, on our segment. This is the ranting section, so we we'll just keep it very brief, or else we'll probably stay here till <laughs> anyway, nobody knows. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this is the fan corner where we discuss uh individual teams that we support. I'm a Manchester United fan, Chama is a Liverpool fan, die hard, you know. So um <laughs> yeah, uh the lay of the land for Man U right now is that we are going through a sale. Uh, we have two mm -hmm. main guys that want to buy the club, but the, 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 the Glazers, the owners of the club, haven't decided yet. It's been about three months, probably, I don't know. Like, haven't it's decided just... yet <laughs> when to sell. There's no there's no kind of communication going on when the, the deadline would be for the sale. So that is holding back our transfers. And also, yeah. they're putting up this, or oh, we have FFP rules, so we can't spend a lot of money, which is, I don't believe, to be honest, because, you know, you're probably one of the the, the the teams with the highest profit margin so you should be able to spend if Chelsea is spending I don't mm -hmm. know why we should be able to spend but anyways yeah. I think um we have signed Mason Mount from Chelsea I'm sure Chelsea fans are saying that it's, it's nothing it doesn't you know it doesn't bother them but I think it does he's one of their darlings yeah he's been there since mm -hmm. I don't know how old eight nine years old so I'm a big fan of Mason Mount I told you this right I remember when he first break into the uh the, in, into the Chelsea team I was I was a yeah. big fan of him and how he played so I think him and the coach, Eli Ten Hag, working together, I think it's going to be beneficial beneficial for our team. Uh, I think it's going to do wonders. The only problem I have is where is he going to play? Uh, I don't know what the team yeah. is going to be like because Bruno is a, is a 10. Messi Mount is like a 10. I don't think he's a midfield. I don't think he's a midfield like, uh, uh, like a, mm -hmm. a, a midfield uh, playmaker. He's, he likes to advance. He likes to move into the box. So that's going to be, you know, but that's a, that's the coach's decision to make. That's his headache. So mm -hmm. whatever. We needed a striker because we don't have a striker. Marshall is unreliable. I think he should be sold. 
but he's still there. Yeah, you know, we haven't sold any player. But Harry Maguire should probably leave. So uh, I think the feeling is probably sign true strikers, one main striker, which I believe could have been Kane. But we all know how mm-hmm. dealing with um, Daniel Levy is, you know, and Kane is going to be expensive. Nothing less than 80 to 100 million pounds. So I think we are going with a Hoyland, a younger striker, you know, from At- Atalanta, which we can mold into the type of striker that we want. You know, so if we get, yeah. um, uh, we've gotten Mount, if we sign Mount, Onana, a keeper, a super keeper, who's also a distribution type. We, we struggled last season with the, with the hair, obviously, you know, his distribution and his control, you know, like that kind of um, new modern keeper. Uh, he's not that type, you know, even though he's, he's a very good shot stopper, he's not that type. So we need a new keeper. So Onana is about to be signed, you know, and that takes us to how the, the hair has been treated. Apparently, you know, he was given a deal on reduced wages, but then the because of the errors that they happened that happened last season <laughs> in the end of last season they withdrew the contract which you shouldn't do it's not professional to be honest i don't like that you know if you you need to be true to your word and, and whatever opinion you have about the hair he's the legend of the of the club he's the last player to remain from the side like Ferguson era so he's done a lot for the club you know maybe a new coach has come in and he doesn't suit that coach's playing style it's not his fault things change in football all the time you know, but I feel I still feel like you know they should have treated him better, you know, let him retire and let him have that you know last moment with the fans and then move him on, you know. But it seems like we don't know what we're doing. But anyway, I'm happy for the players that we are about to sign or are going to sign. If we have more in other positions, that's fine. I don't I like honestly, that's like you know, because I know the situation that the club is in. We are focusing on the transfer first. I mean the sale of the club. Once the glazers are out, I'm I'm happy. I'm sure things will move on, you know, whatever whoever owner we have. Things are going to be better than what we have had the last two years. So yeah, <clears throat> that is uh, the rundown on everything. I don't want to take too much time. Tama. Yeah, I mentioned that thing out too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yes, <laughs> like there here is an interesting one. Huh? There here is an interesting one. Uh, I think he said his his last contract was four years ago, where he had he signed this contract with you know three hundred and fifty k a week. Hmm. That was a lot of money. Uh, I, yeah, of course, it's not our money in the pocket. But if you look at the 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 the, the money that the players are earning in the Premier League, uh, you will say, yeah, it was tough for United <laughs> because I don't know how they give him that contract, and I don't know how the highest agent uh, got that because from. Actually, that, that was like a that was like a like a, a convincing type of uh, deal. He was wanted to leave. He was supposed to leave. Remember the fax machine, to Real Madrid. It was almost yeah. out the door. So yeah, and then that was like, okay, you, you want to stay? We're going to give you a lot of money to stay. You know. No, but that, but that's not the year he signed the contract. Was that the year he signed the three hundred and fifty k contract? I'm not I think this three hundred and fifty. No, after that, after that, like that time he was. That was long time ago. The Real Madrid one was before they signed uh, Cotua. Before even Cotua went to Real Madrid, that was like yeah, that was yeah, that was yeah, that was right away. Yeah. That was six seven years ago. That was long time ago. That fax machine thing. He was young at that time, you know. He was at the peak of his power and stuff like this. We, the projections were so high for him, so his value was very high at that time. Eighty million. I don't know, Manchester, like why they messed that one up, but that was the time to 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 really uh, to get rid of him. Yeah, it's not like was he was not a good. He's actually, not, yeah, they were supposed to sell him. He was on his way out, but apparently something happened yeah. with Amadi. I don't know which side. Something happened. Yeah. Side. But then, for me, where he got that three hundred and fifty k. Like, do you know the players? What the players are in the Premier League? So, so just just to give you example for for other clubs, the the most uh, paid player in the Premier League currently is is Kevin De Bruyne, four hundred thousand a week. Of course, Ronaldo came and then smashed that record. Uh, Ronaldo, when he came, he smashed that record with his five hundred plus because it's yeah. Ronaldo. It's Ronaldo. At the end of the day, uh, you got him for free. That one, I don't know. It was his free or 20, 20 million. I don't. I cannot even remember. But yeah, it's yeah. Ronaldo. He can get it whatever he wants, just like Messi. They can get whatever they want. Mbappe, they can get whatever they want. And anyway, whatever club they want. That's why not all clubs can, can afford them. So, but to, they, currently you have Kevin De Bruyne, 400000 a week. Haaland, who just came because of Man City did not pay a lot of money for him. They, they, they only paid for him. So, because of that compensation, he had to get a huge, you know, high, wage, yeah. uh, yeah. high wages. And his wage is about 375k a week. Salah, who has been one of the best players in the Premier League is the third with 350 and they here. So Salah signed his contract last summer. <laughs> 350. How did they here get this 350k? 
Or is it just Manchester United are just too easy? But, but, but because Sancho is also around that, that number. Sancho is 2270. Around 200. I think around 200. 270. I, when I saw the list, like, wow. like I cannot understand. Mount is coming in at 260 million, 250 million. But all, those things, all, all those things are, I think, is a bit inflated, to be honest. I don't think they're getting that, that amount. But that is what the list is. Bonuses and things like that all together, that's, that's, what it, that's the, the, the max you can get. But still, it's a bit high because United are known for, for giving big wages. That's that's what we, that's why it's difficult for us to sell our players. Because you can't sell a player to another team and if you agree a fee and then the player is still demanding the 250 that you signed. Nobody, is, nobody can afford so, that kind of wage. That's why we can't sell our players. So I, Simple. Yeah. And I, so now going back to the here, to get that, I think, you know, United, it, it is relieving for United that <laughs> like the year is gone. <laughs> Even though he, he was the best keeper in the Premier League in terms of clean sheet last season, yeah. it's just that relief. Yeah, this 350 was so difficult for them. So that's why I think even the way they handle it is so poor. Like you see, it's so poor. It's poor. Like, it's like, like they don't even want to make that they don't even want to make that mistake of giving, giving him a contract again, and then the contract turns out to be you know another crazy one. But yeah, yeah. and even the like how how much they were gonna pay him. If he was going to drop, I think his it was on reduced two hundred and something thousand. It was like significant reduction, but yeah. But I, I believe but even that's it, it, any it, sense. It, they should have they should have made that decision earlier because they knew that the coach always wanted a new keeper. But uh -huh. obviously, because the budget was small, they couldn't. A keeper was not their priority at this time. Yes, this, this they wanted to replace. They, they wanted to they wanted to look for a striker, a midfielder, you know, some other place, and then next yeah, season I, probably I, get a new keeper. But it just so happens that his contract was ending right now this season. This you yeah. know, so we're gonna extend it on reduced wages. They already offered yeah. it to him. But I think the yeah. mistakes last season, or those those you know, serious gaps that he made probably maybe angered or annoyed the coach, you know. And then obviously yeah. this opportunity with this Onana, uh, the interkeeper also just happens to want to come. And his his transfer transfer fee is not that as much, about 40, they're looking for 50 million. Also, 60 million uh, euros. It's not a lot. <laughs> but you are Manchester United. You are Manchester United. So so those kind of things is not a lot for you. Yeah, but for my, me, my, like, my, my, my I have to think about it. Yeah, my only problem is that they should have they should have taken they should have handled it much better. The club should have handled much, it much better. better. And showed him more respect, yeah. you know, as, as a manager. Showing more respect. I agree. I absolutely, I absolutely agree. Yeah, definitely. Um I, I yeah, absolutely so going, agree. going to your, your Liverpool transfer, like fill us in and what's happening. <laughs> Yeah, for us, we are we, got, we are going about our business, doing our rebuilding process. Uh, we identify our problems. <clears throat> Last season, I think uh, we became stubborn. The coach became stubborn with his, you know, like, uh, you know, he's very loyal to his players. Uh, when it comes to, like, he trusts his players with all he have. And, of course, it gives him reward at the end of the day. Yeah. But last season, it really backfired on him. Uh, at the start of the season, he was talking about uh, how good we are midfield-wise and stuff like this, you know. Even though people were... Asked, like other men that the midfield was not good enough, they were aging and stuff like this. Uh, of course, for me, I still uh, I still thought the midfield was not good enough, personally, but I also thought it was good enough to finish at least in the top four. I didn't, because going into last season, expectation was to compete. Because if you remember last season, I predicted Liverpool to be the, the title winners, if, despite that midfield, because I thought the team was that good. So, like, I, don't, I didn't think it was that bad to finish outside the top four. But at the end, I don't. I still thought it was not good enough because of quite like, like yeah, it was it was a mess. But they are addressing that issue. The coach realized later realized that he made a mistake when he, when he was being so you know like back why he when he backed those players too much, he made a mistake. Like he shouldn't have done that. And now he's addressing that issue. We have you know uh, addressing that midfield problem. I think we sent two very good players. Even though Sabosly, I see him as a mid, as a ten, not as a midfielder. Even though people say he might be able to play in that in that role, but I see him as more of an advanced player, you know, playing but not as the as the midfielder. But still, we still got uh, McAllister, and uh, yeah, yeah, and then we still have some some midfielders in there. And I see some of the young players will grow. Curtis Jones is doing a very good job with his England under 21. He's been one of their best players in the competition right now. And uh, Javier Elliott is doing well. So we have numbers in midfield now with the addition of quality of those players. And then the older players like Henderson and, and Fabinho, I expect them to, you know, like to have a better season than they have last season. Not that I would expect them to be the players they used to be, but I expect them to have a better season. Thiago, I don't know if he's going to stay or going to go because I... 
yeah, he may leave to 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 the Saudi league and stuff like that, but he's not want to go. So yeah, I still think we have a we are one midfield shot, especially in the defensive category. That's what I was but going to mention. Yeah, right? yeah, defensive midfield to 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 to, to back up uh, Fabinho. But also the kid is gonna come back. <clears throat> if we bring in another defensive midfielder, we're gonna kind of uh stop the progress of players like Bicic. You remember Bicic, right? Yeah, Bicic, yeah. Because he got injured in the later stage of his team, but he was a player who became our best player at some point last season. So that player needs to progress. So we have to create that path, which is also important at Liverpool. We have yeah. to create path for these younger players to do it. So if we said a defensive midfielder now who's gonna start you and then there is still Fabinho, where yeah. is he gonna where is where, where is he gonna fall? So those kind of things are important. Uh, if yeah, if nobody leaves in the midfield, I think I am comfortable. For me, one position we need to address is a defensive uh, centre back. It's an extra centre back. Mm. Um, the injuries are too much. Yeah, for yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. The, and, and then the like the, the, the Van Dijk last year he was fit enough. Maybe he got some injured at some point. And then uh, Ibu Karate, he got a lot of injuries, you know, uh, here and there. So that that is but Matip too. He's an injury prone player. Joe Gomez, I don't think he is the, the same player since he came back from his injury. So I feel one of those two, Matip or Joe Gomez, should make way. They should leave. And we should sign a centre back who will cover Van Dijk, not Ibu Konate, but who should cover Van Dijk, left-sided centre back, because of the way we played last season. We were playing with Trent coming inside as a as a midfielder, so it means in the end we start with three central defenders, and that means Robertson has to drop and become one of one of these three centre backs, which um, I don't like so much. A question yes? before you continue. I, I wanted to bring this up during the, the when we were di discussing the defenders. Is this the reason why? We have Trent's uh, um, price so high this time around because last season at the end, I think he played some um, some games in midfield. Right? He was the best player this yeah. season. So the even last few ten games, even when when England had their uh, their their friendly is friendly or whatever it was, the game he played in yeah. midfield and he scored a goal. So is this uh -huh. like the, the the appeal of Trent now, or is was this uh, positional change from Klopp like kind of a necessity? So is it something that you're going to play, a formation you're going to employ this coming season, or is it just something that you played before because you didn't have the numbers in, in that in that defense? Yeah, uh, I would say in terms of Trent, the, the midfield change, he did not like the, what change was his uh Man City, Man City they are doing it and they are doing well, Aster we are doing it, we are doing well, and then we have Trent, and then he was struggling defensively, and then we wanted mm -hmm. to address that defensive problem. Mm -hmm. And we and we also know that he's one of our best at creative players in the team. So how can we, you know, maximize that? And then club say, okay, this is working for player teams like Arsenal, uh, teams like Arsenal and teams like Manchester City. Why not we try it with Trent and then, you know, play him in the hybrid role where when we have the ball, he's a midfielder. When we don't have the ball, he go back to his defensive duty and then we are organized. Because the problem with Trent is not like when we have, uh, when we are in a defensive setup, like, when we are because football is for four, four phases right you have the defensive phase you have the uh attacking phase and then you have the transitional phases the two terms of a defensive transition or attacking transition and trend usually struggle when we have this defensive transition from from attack and then we are transitioning to defense and then they are coming at him one-on-one -on -one. that is when we his problem when we had problem not really when we are at rest defense so to address that then they, they move him into midfield and then it worked england they played him as a midfielder. It was different. They did not play him as oh, a right back. Oh, okay, okay. That's the difference between England and, 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 and Liverpool. So, but Liverpool, I think we will maintain the formation, the three box three, because this is the new trend in football. Three, and then you have a box in midfield, box midfield, and then you have a three up top. Mm -hmm. Like, just like Arsenal do it, when Zinchenko go, you have Zinchenko party, and then Zaka will move up. Z Zaka will move up, and then he will be the two number 10 with, with other gaps. So you have three box. Man City likewise, Stones will move and then you have Stones and Rodley and then you have Gundagan and Kevin De Bruyne on, in the, that form the box. So Liverpool too, like, that is a role that suits Trent very much because he's one of the best passers. If not the best passing defenders I think the Premier League has ever seen. So to move him into that position, his passing range, we see how many assists he got from deep and how many times he dictated games playing and in that, in that position. So yeah, it is appealing. This is very interesting. That's why I actually I need a centre-back, left centre-back. Because of uh, Trent is the one who's gonna move into the midfield, so that left fullback, like like Arsenal will drop uh, right now. What is his name? White. He's a 
He's not a, because you are talking. White is not a general, natural fullback. But why he is so suitable in that position? Because Arsenal will convert into a three defense, and mm -hmm. if they convert into a three defense, uh, Gabriel, who is a left-footed natural left-footer, will move onto the left. Saliba, mm -hmm. who is a right-footed, he will move into the center, and then White will be the third center back. Man City, mm -hmm. likewise, they play with four center backs because if Stones drop into the midfield. Then the left-sided centre back, which is okay, sometimes it can be Laporte. He will drop into the central defence. Even Akanji sometimes play in the final. He played yeah, in the left yeah. left fullback. But it's not it's not important that he's a left footer or a right footer because he's gonna drop into a central defence mm -hmm. uh, to pop, to form the back three. This is why they want Guardiola, Man City. They want Guardiola so that when they transition into the four three four box uh, four uh, three box four three formation, then Guardiola is one of the best players for that rule. Yeah, this is why at Liverpool too, I want a left-sided centre-back. This is why, where I was going to head to Chelsea's uh, kid, which is Colwell. Uh, oh, Colwell, yeah. he's, yeah, he's a player that, like, is my dream player for us to sign. Even though it will going to give uh, robots in competition because if we, but why, why I like to have that centre-back option is we, it's not, we're not going to stick into this three box, three box, three formation. We can sometimes go to 433, which we are very good at, yeah, and then yeah, Robertson yeah. will be yeah. then Robertson will be that, that fullback. Then we can, you know, so you can be flexible, have different types of formation. This is why this is why I dream of a center back. This is why I want us to address that position. Yeah, you I out, spoke man. a lot about, yeah, about the money. That's the, that's the, that's the money. Bring the money out. <laughs> it's Chelsea. It depends on Chelsea. If Chelsea are selling Colwell, I think Liverpool will go for it. I don't think that's they want to I don't think they want to sell him. I think they want to keep him. The problem with him is um uh, he has two years left on his contract. And the kid needs assurance for playing time. Of course, I don't know. Uh, according to Chelsea fans, Chelsea, are, they have given him that, that assurance that he will play. Mm -hmm. He will play. Like, because they sell Kulubari already. And yeah. then uh, yeah. they sell Aspilicueta. Or, 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 or so maybe uh, Chaloba too could leave. So he's the only... And right now, but, but he has silly, the one they sign, he's injured. So maybe that can convince him to sign a contract. But for him, he say he will not sign any contract until after the Euros, he will talk to the manager. Now, what he decide, that is up to him and his team. So, even if, if Chelsea don't want to sign him, if the player said, I'm not going to sign the contract, what will Chelsea yeah, do? Are they going to keep him and then enter the life final year of his contract? Or are they going to sell him? That right. is a decision for Chelsea to make at that point. So, for me, that is what I'm waiting for. What they make if he wants to sign or if he doesn't want to sign. If he doesn't want to sign, I'm sure Liverpool will be willing. And Chelsea are not going to offer him any European football this season. Uh, mm -hmm. Chelsea have only the Premier League to play for. So, all these things have to play a part yep. for him to make a decision. If Liverpool say, okay, you are coming, or, or any other team, Brighton or something, you are coming, and then you are Brighton, even Brighton, they are in Europe. Chelsea are not in Europe. So all these things are going to play a part. What is he going to decide on? Like, is he have that loyalty for Chelsea? I don't know. So we will wait and see on that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's uh, our fun point. I mean, yeah, it's <laughs> interesting, man. I mean, there's a lot has been going on in our, like in both our clubs, <laughs> especially this transfer. You know, uh -huh. A lot of things are happening here. Yeah. I think most teams in the top six, if you don't get it right, this transfer window, a lot of like the teams can leave you behind, so it's very crucial, like the kind of players you bring in and where you strengthen your team, you know. And as much as we don't have a lot of funds, I think the players we are signing are key. I'm, I'm not sure about Mount, to be honest. But Onana, if what do you mean you don't have a lot of funds? You are you guys are very rich, you say you don't have a lot of funds. Well, yes, just seeing financial fair, fair play. <laughs> owners don't want to, the owners don't want to shell out cash because obviously they, they are going to sell the club, so you don't want to sell if you're going to sell, you don't want to invest in the club, do you? So that's the problem we have right now. And this sale is not gonna is gonna drag on all the way. Who knows when? Maybe even January. We're talking about it still. So, you know, yeah. Anyways, guys, Chow, any last words? I think we have uh, run the. We <laughs> really had a long part, but yeah, yeah we, we, it was a long show. This was a long, long one, but yeah, it's good. I I I enjoy it. I enjoy to talk about FPL with with yeah. some form of yeah. you know. Uh, how can I say a lot a little bit more passion like mm. the when we did the review? I didn't have that passion, but today <laughs> I'm coming back. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Um, so guys, thank you for supporting the pod as as well. You know, we really appreciate you guys. So look out for the new season. Um, we might have an episode also before the season uh, starts officially. What when is it? August. Um, obviously, we should have one. The day that we should. Yeah, have. we will have one. Like obviously <laughs> before we make one, but we need to have one before uh, that one, like a. a a preview to the start of the season anyway. So we'll see. And, and then look, the, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, yeah. What, ch what changes? Yeah. yeah, see what changes. How the draft changes, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
Um, so thanks, thanks guys for supporting the pod as, as always. Like I said before, um, catch you guys on the next one.